Hello, my name is Marcus Brandt. I'm the head of mission of International IDEA for Myanmar. And uh, today I have the great honor to speak with uh, Kasit Piromia, who is a very well-known uh, figure in Thailand, uh, retired diplomat uh, with a great uh, uh, experience of service in uh, the Soviet Union, Russia, the United States, Japan, Germany, Indonesia, and some other countries. He has also served as the foreign minister of Thailand from 2008 to 2011. Uh, following which he has uh, served in the parliament for the Democrat Party. In, uh, I think, believe 2019, you retired from active politics, but you are still very much uh, present in the public uh, as a member, board member of the a uh, ASEAN uh, Parliamentarians for Human Rights, uh, a non-governmental group that brings together uh, former and active MPs uh, that care about democracy and human rights in the region. Uh, Kasit Biromia has uh, been very outspoken uh, on the situation in Myanmar, in Thailand, but also internationally. And today I would like to talk to you about the special relationship between Thailand and uh, Myanmar, especially when it comes to the struggle for democracy, which started around 90 years ago in both uh, Burma and, uh, and Thailand. And uh, there has been a lot of interaction and uh, and. Uh, mutual uh, uh, influence between these two countries. Uh, so with that, uh, maybe let me ask you, first of all, where do you see Thailand uh, standing with regard to the struggle for democracy in Myanmar at the moment? Okay. Before answering that, just to say it, uh, greetings, Swadhi uh, Krab from, from Bangkok. And it's an honor to, to have the chance to speak to you and through you to all the Burmese friends, Myanmar friends, and so on. Thank you. Good. We will uh, be translating uh, this interview into Burmese, and mm -hmm. we will publish it uh, on our social media channels, and we will also uh, advertise your own uh, YouTube channel and the various uh, uh, publications that you have, uh, have uh, issued uh, on Myanmar. So we want to make sure that your opinion, your views also get known to the Myanmar wider public. Thank you. Okay. So where would you see in, at the moment the, the complicated, complex relationship between Thailand and Myanmar and the, and the uh, struggle for democracy in the neighboring country? I have to start from very basic reality that is from the domestic setup of the Thai kingdom. Whatever domestic setup in the country reflects the foreign policy direction of Thailand. And uh, for the past 12, 15 years, the domestic setup in Thailand was very much influenced and dominated by the armored forces, especially the Thai army. And in that sense, our foreign policy directions towards Myanmar and it, the practical conduct from my observation and understanding is very much controlled and dictated by, dictated by the position of the Thai armored forces. So, and what has then been the uh, sort of the basic position of the uh, of the armored forces that is, uh, I think, reflected in the posture of the civilian uh, government, past and present, one under General Prayut Chan Ocha and for the past uh, seven, eight months under Prime Minister Seta Tuisin. And it is still very much influenced by the position of the army in particular. And why so? It's because the democratization process of Thailand is still in the making. We have not become a full-fledged democratic kingdom or a country 
like Indonesia, the Philippines, or Mongolia, speaking of the emerging developing nations, and not only to speak mm. of Taiwan or South Korea or Japan, which have become very advanced, modernized, and developed democracies. So in that sense, Thailand at the moment is semi-democratic and semi-authoritarian as reflected in the spirit and letters of the present Thai constitution, I think of the year 2017, mm -hmm. which was written and very much influenced by the dictates of the armed forces who staged the coup d'etat in 2014. And they have been in power and at the moment inside the coalition government they have at least two political parties that were more or less set up by retired generals. So the new coalition government of Thailand is very much uh, comp composed of military generals and military thinking mm -hmm. that uh, have a lot of influence over the civilian government and from the military point of view it's always the security consideration not about democracy and human mm -hmm. rights refugees human trafficking and second for many many decades the thai army has been having a very cordial fraternal relationship with the myanmar or the burmese counterpart the Tatmadaw. So whatever Thailand does or has been doing is very much based on the position of the army. Mm -hmm. And when the army has more or less decided that uh, Thailand should keep good relationship with the Burmese counterpart, whatever happened, doesn't matter. So the main partner of Thailand or the Thai army is the Burmese military establishment. But at the same time, Thailand is no longer under complete military rule. It has become semi-democratic and authoritarian. And the present government profess itself to have been democratically elected. So in that sense, the civilian leadership must try to have the civilian rule over the military establishment. So it's an internal problem that Thailand needs to overcome. Mm -hmm. And that, if that were to be achieved, then the policy directions toward the Tatmadaw, the Myanmar military establishment, and the ongoing civil war will have a com uh, completely different uh, di direction. Because if this coalition government to profess itself to be democratically elected, then it should have uh, been keeping a sort of a distance from the military establishment of Myanmar who staged the coup d'etat three years ago. And at the same time, to try to forge a more formal relationship with the democratic forces of Myanmar, more or less led by the national unity government in coordination and collaboration with all the various democratic elements of Myanmar, inclusive of the minority state governments like the Mon, the Chin, the Kachin, the Shan, the Karen, the Kareni, mm -hmm. the, or even the Arakans, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so on. So then my answer to you is that the new Thai government, more or less civilian uh, control, Democracy elected 
must end its cordial relationship with the Myanmar military counterpart and direct more attention to the democratic forces of Myanmar led by the NUG. And concurrently, it has to take into consideration the five-point consensus as agreed by the 10 members of the ASEAN community, mm -hmm. inclusive of the military leadership of Myanmar. And I think there are three basic uh, points. One is the immediate ceasefire. Second is the return to the negotiating table of all the stakeholders of all sides, but basically between the military and the opposition to the military rule. And third is the a more coordinated humanitarian assistance, especially from the Thai border to the Myanmar people at the border and deep inside Myanmar. Mm. So three things that could be done. Mm. And all of this needs to, for the Thai, new Thai government have a, to have a clear cut policy measure and announce it publicly to the international community. And at the same time, to move quickly to work hand in hand with various agency of the United Nations, including the International Migrant Organization, and working with the various agency of potential donor countries, like Japan, members of the European Union, uh, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and so on. Mm. So the Thai government will be able to handle both the humanitarian uh, uh, problem and to handle the influx of refugees without difficulty because it doesn't have to do it alone. It will have the help, the support mm. of the international community through the United Nations as well as through the, I think, uh, uh, the offer of the various donor countries, mm. especially those that are democracies mm. so that's how i see the whole thing and now in this constellation and with these constraints what uh, advice would you give to for instance the national unity government or the uh, myanmar democracy activists who are based many of whom in thailand uh, on the various uh, arrangements uh, and in what way could they reach out more effectively to the thai general public uh, at large, uh, because you already said that there is sort of a certain position given by the military influence on the Thai government, the political system, but then there are opposition MPs, for example, parliamentarians, there is civil society, there is the media. How could one expand this conversation between uh, Myanmar sort of democratic elements and the Thai general public? The, the first point is that, uh, say, the NUG to cover everything mm -hmm. on the Myanmar mm -hmm. side has to be able to identify who are the real friends mm -hmm. of the democratic movement in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And I could profess that I'm one of them, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I need to have more contact mm -hmm. and collaboration. Mm -hmm. with them. I have been meeting members of the NUG, some face-to-face, uh, -face, mm -hmm. but most of the time through the Zoom discussion mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on. Okay, I have been also meeting quite a few members of the various NGOs mm -hmm. from the Myanmar side, mostly based in Chiang Mai, up in the north of Thailand. I met many at my sort mm -hmm. at the Thai Myanmar uh, but, uh, I met some of the Mon, the Karen, the Kareni, and the Shan mm -hmm. political leaders, and so on. But it was not being all of this has not been quite in a structured and continuous mm -hmm. member. Mm 
and mm -hmm. uh, uh, manner. Mm -hmm. So there is a need to be, I think, a more structured mm -hmm. collaboration system. That's the first point. And second, there are so many, both Thai and international NGOs. So on the Thai side, you know, even international NGOs, there are Thai people working in there. Mm -hmm. So we are not lacking organizations and personnel to be the counterpart of the Myanmar side. But let's be more systematic. And then when I said systematic, what do I mean? Which I have been telling the NUG people, you know, uh, NUCC, CRPH, and all of this, mm -hmm. that or even the minorities, uh, what do you call it, uh, state, mm -hmm. and so on, that what you are you doing? What are you thinking? You sh must put them on papers and disseminate. And one outstanding issue is what is the latest ideas and consensus among all mm. the opposition forces mm -hmm. about the new federal, democratic, and inclusive Myanmar. Is there a new draft constitution? And it, where in the preamble it is stated clearly that the new Myanmar would be inclusive federal and democratic. Mm -hmm. There would be division of labor between the center in Nepidor and the various capital town or cities of the ethnic states. Mm -hmm. Okay, and inside the Burma proper central plain and so on, how many regions that would have some autonomy Mm -hmm. you know, at the local, as a local government, decentralized level and so on. All of these developments in the thinking and putting on the paper must be disseminated uh, to the publics inside the ASEAN community, mm -hmm. especially in Malaysia and in Thailand, mm -hmm. because we are you know, uh, sort of the immediate mm -hmm. neighbors. Mm -hmm. And both of us have been, I think, welcoming ordinary refugees, but in particular the Rohingyas and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. And one other point about the new setup, when I say inclusive, it must include the Rohingya citizens of Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is a non-negotiable. You cannot exclude mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be that, that one. And second, we could also work together in the human resources development, mm -hmm. training the personnel of both the people in the central government or who would, you know, NUG and so on, that would be working and running the new government of Myanmar in the future, as well as training the personnel of the various ethnic states administration and so on. Third is to have a more organization on the part of the Myanmar side through the coordination of NUG, the centers to receive humanitarian assistance and the coordination that could take place. And in this regards, I think the UN agencies, UNHCR, humanitarian centers and so on could be the agency in between the Thai government mm -hmm. and international community and on one side and across the border, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the various uh, minorities, organization and the NUG. Mm -hmm. And in certain area where the Myanmar military established has a control set down south, mm -hmm southeast or south of Thailand and Myanmar and so on, then there could be a direct contact mm -hmm. with the purpose of through the Tatmandaw and so on, humanitarian assistance could be distributed to the, to the Myanmar people deep inside uh, Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? 
reaching those uh, most in need. Yeah. Most most in need. Yeah. And of course, not to the families of the mm. of the Tatmado and so on. So there must be some sort of uh, assurance to the transparency mm. that everyone do benefit from the humanitarian mm -hmm. assistance. Mm -hmm. Then, at the same time, uh, I I believe that the a more massive vaccination program is very much needed for malaria. Tuberculosis, or maybe to prevent the remnants of the COVID-19, mm. but vaccination should be an ongoing mm. uh, process because you have more children coming out and all of this, and access to medical treatment and so on. And at the same time, one also have to look into the foot and mouth disease of the cattle, mm. which is you know go across uh, the the border. And one other point is for the Thai government, together with the UN and the international communities, to have a sort of a, a master plan on how to handle cross-border crimes. Mm. You know, which needs the cooperation from both the military government of Myanmar as well as the various governments and authorities of the opposition side mm. because in certain areas like Myavadi, i think the thai and the international community side would have to speak at least to three parties mm. the current armed elements the renegade current armed elements mm. and the renegades burman soldiers and so on who mm. control the routes mm. for transportation and all of this and so on and in return for the end of illegal trade extortion drugs running casinos mm. scam mm. centers mm. what can the thailand and the international community compensate to the various ethnic states mm. and to the whatever remains of the central government of Myanmar under the military rule, whether they could do more of the contract farming, mm. okay, credit for small trade across the border, or just basic rural and agricultural development. Mm. You've already mentioned public health, disease control, organized crime. These are all elements of the very close and tight interrelationship between Myanmar and uh, Thailand. Mm -hmm. uh, last week uh, at Thammasat University, we spoke about climate change uh, mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it is also very obvious that the climate uh, change impacts in Thailand and uh, Myanmar are very much interrelated. Uh, there is a very close energy collaboration between Myanmar and Thailand. Uh, there are a number of shared natural resources, rivers, forests. Uh, so this just multiplies the, the interdependency and interrelation between uh, Myanmar and Thailand. Uh, could you also maybe say of, of how important it would be to have legitimate, effective uh, and democratic government in Myanmar for Thailand's own uh, interest in terms of natural resource management, uh, environmental questions, and climate-related questions. Well, on, on the broader point, I think the continuation of uh, military and authoritarian rule in Myanmar would be detrimental to the enhancement first of the bilateral relationship, because there will always be the uneasy feeling. Mm inside the Thai public, mm. that the Thai public would not want the Thai government, any Thai government, to have that Nor special relationship, relationship and so yes. on. Because the Thai people for the past 92 years mm. have also been fighting against military rule. Mm. So one must not forget that. that, that, that that's a general picture. Mm. Mm. So we have to go for the democratization of Myanmar. Second, it also has bearing on ASEAN community's dignity, self-respect, and 
cohesion or unity. Mm. See, one cannot have certain government inside on the ASEAN side uh, dealing, loving to deal with the Tatmadaw, and then the rest would like to deal with the NUG and so on. Mm. So there, there must be a consensus. Mm -hmm. And on, we already have the five-point consensus, so we can work together on that mm -hmm. point. So that's a general picture that I think uh, there is a need for democracy to return to Myanmar. That's the first point. Second, with a democratic setup and so on, one could foresee the people participation at the local level. Mm for them to be, I think, responsible to the environment. Mm. They don't have to wait for the mm. top-down rules and so on. Mm -hmm. A lot of initiative can be done at the village and at the local administrative level. Like, uh, so, so people's participation mm. for their own environment should be the name of the game mm. and not the sole responsibility of the government and so on. That's the first point. Second, between Myanmar and Thailand, there are at least three rivers. And the most important one is the Salawin. Although Thailand has the common, what you call it, uh, ownership of the Salawin, about 100 kilometers. But the amount of water is immense and has been underutilized. And I think uh, to have a cooperation to utilize the Salawin would have benefits both for the electrification and especially for the irrigation mm -hmm. as for Thailand in particular mm -hmm. and so on. So the Salawin could be a very important source of water beside the Menam River and the Mekong River, mm -hmm. which is an international water water and so on mm -hmm. see and then we have the mer and all of these mm. the smaller ones mm. but that has very much more to do with the conservation of the watersheds and so on and uh, to make sure that we keep on uh, looking after them not to have them uh, what you call the uh, keep on changing the course or inundated mm. and all of mm. this and once we have enough water to ensure the water supply for the whole year even in the non-monsoon period of three or four months and so on, it will be good for the farming population. Mm. It will be good for the basic livelihood and the security of life. Mm. So irrigation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And it needs peace to happen. Mm. And to work, at least from the Thai point of view, we have to work at two levels concurrently, one with the, the ethnic state authorities and at the same time to keep the central authority in Nepidor abreast of what's going on. Mm. Because most of the Thai border uh, is bordering, I think, at least four major ethnic groups, mm. the Mon, the Karen, the Kareni, and the Shan. Mm. So out of, I think, 2,400 kilometers of common border, 70% mm. or something like this, is a common border with their ethnic yes. minority yes. state and not with the, with the central government. So in that sense, I think the central authorities in Nepidor must understand the geographical reality mm that it is not the wish of the Thai side to go and undermine the central authority in mm. Nepal by working very closely with the ethnic minorities. Mm. This is a practical thing and it's bene mutually beneficial. Mm. And everything could be put it on, on the table mm. in a transparent, accountable manner and so on. Mm. Good, Kelsey. Thank you very much. Uh, we have to uh, wrap up already today, but this is a fascinating uh, tour around so many issues uh, that you are very deeply familiar with. Uh, I think you make it very clear that there is a dividend of peace and democracy that both Thailand and Myanmar would benefit from. Uh, so let us hope that, uh, that the situation that uh, is currently unfolding 
will bring about this uh, positive end uh, for, for both uh, countries. Uh, we have to uh, conclude the, this interview already today. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to ask you sort of one last uh, point maybe of what uh, can you tell the young generation in Thailand and uh, Myanmar to keep going, to keep up the hope that after these 92 years in Thailand, the decades of democratic struggle uh, can, you know, give some hope that this is now the moment when, uh, when it can actually happen. Or, you know, how do we push back against the cynicism that says, well, the elites will always uh, grab, hold on to power and uh, the fight for democracy is pointless. What can we tell them to yeah. inspire? The first point is that it's only a hundred years ago, about, that the white woman in Europe and in North America were being given the freedom to cast their votes in the democratic setting. So it took them hundreds of years. Then it was only in 1960s that the colored people in the United States who originally came from the African continent were being given the full right. And inside the United States, up to this very minute, there is still the struggle for the social acceptance of equality and access to opportunities regardless of the colors and the religious affiliation and so on. So the United States is still working on democracies. And one has to continue to work and cannot, will have, cannot give up. That's the first point. Second, in the 1980s, we saw a lot of uh, student movement and uprisings in Taiwan and in South Korea. Then in the 1990s, we saw a lot of uprising and protests in the Philippines and Indonesia and to a certain extent in Thailand. But uh, both the Philippines and Indonesia have emerged to become a very viable democratic entities. So in that sense, young generations of Myanmar and Thailand should keep on trying and should not give up. It's a continuous fight for human emancip emancipation. And it takes time because you're going to do it peacefully. But I think time is on, our, on the younger generation side. Because when I was younger and, you know, expressing my displeasure of Thai military government in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, we did not have the benefit of the information technology and the social media. Mm. So we can connect with one another. We can share more ideas, information. We could co coordinate our struggle together. So just keep on changing. And I think on the 14th of member, at least in Thailand, 14th of May last year, there was a very definite and tangible turning point. Because on the 14th of May last year, for the first time that Thailand elections were won by a political party that did not use money to buy votes. Mm. And second, a lot of young people 
have returned to the to politics in terms of interest and participation. Mm. And they have voted for a political party that aims to bring about transformation of the Thai kingdom through or for whether they could do not or not that remains to be seen. But at least what that political party has come out that we would like to see changes in the Thai society has already captured. The imagination of the young people, mm. and now in Myanmar, the Myanmar young people have gone even further. Not only making protests, carrying out civic disobedience, but they have the courage and the braveness. To take up arms to fight military suppression and atrocities, and in three years, they have become more successful. And what the Burmese young people are doing should give a lot of thoughts, thinking. And encouragement, and inspiration to the Thai young generation, mm. and the two young generations of both countries should have more contact. I think the Thai Student Association of each university in Thailand, we have more than 200 university, should take a more Keen interest in what's going on in Myanmar, mm. and share the common concern, have the feeling of affinity to the fellow human beings. Mm. See, we don't have to go and tell them, but by themselves, with so much of access to information mm. and so on, they should be able to learn more what's going on and work. Together with the Burmese brothers and sisters, and so on. Konkasi, thank you so much for this uh, really interesting conversation with lots of good ideas and recommendations uh, that we can follow up on. So maybe we can even collaborate uh, in the next uh, months and years uh, yeah. on some of these ideas. Yes. And I think that your wise words and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, very positive uh, overall vision of the future of these two countries uh, will give a lot of inspiration to our viewers. And yeah. uh, thank you very much for watching. We will put some of the links uh, uh, for reference uh, under this video, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Yeah.